Welcome back. Today is Monday, the 8th of May. Uh, yesterday was pretty productive, although the work itself is kind of slow. Um, I finished up fabricating um, the, the tie-down assemblies that get bolted onto the spar. Um, <clears throat> what I have left to do with these is basically just clean them up and prime them and then bolt them almost for the final time. And I need to uh, tap the end of it, which I don't have to do right now, but I just think it would be much easier to do it right now than later when it's on the airplane. So I'll probably do that. So um, tie down assemblies, um, tapping, priming, bolting on. Then the next step would be, which is kind of described as part of the same step, is to attach the bell crank brackets, um, which brings me to my next point. Um, <clears throat> you may have noticed when you're watching previous videos in the wing section that I am very frequently grabbing a pile of papers and looking at them. Those aren't the plans. That is the inventory list for the wing kit. The wing kit has a lot of parts. Uh, the empennage kit has a lot of parts too, but not as many. And when I started that, before I started that, I did a really good job of separating out all of the smalls into little individual containers labeled and having all them all in one spot. When I inventoried this kit, there was so much extra uh, small parts that are not parts that I already have, completely new, different size rivets, different size AN bolts, uh, thousands of nut plates and everything like that, that. A lot of that stuff lived in its bags and I'm paying for it right now because when I get to a part in the instructions, it tells me to find, um, 8426-3-7. It's I have to go to the inventory list and scan all eight pages trying to find that one part number to find out what bag it is to find. Oh my God. So I'm gonna have to just expand my collection of small parts bins and get everything done. Otherwise I'll drive myself bananas. And I was kind of warned about this. I've heard a lot of people say that they wasted so much time in later parts of construction, just running around looking for parts and fishing them out of bags like this that are mixed. Anyways, so today, um, yeah, this, this, the bracket, uh, and then if I get all of that done in time, then uh, I will start um, preparing the rear spar, which I'm excited about because once the rear spar is prepared, then we can start getting into actually building the wing. Stay tuned. Let's see if I can keep up with my edit here. Uh, first was just getting the, um, the parts off of the spars where they were kind of test fitted the day before. Then I'll move over to the vise and start tapping, uh, tapping these guys here. Um, as you'll see, I go pretty slowly um, when I'm tapping these things. It's sort of a new operation to me. I haven't done a ton of it, and I really want to make sure that um, the material that I'm tapping uh, is going in straight, um, especially this because uh, you do have to tap it fairly deep, um, and I don't want it to go crooked and, and sort of thin out that material at some point. So anyways, it's my airplane. I want it to be straight. <laughs> um, and I don't know why, but I find uh, the process of tapping uh, this stuff pretty satisfying, although slow work. I, I think that on each one of these, I spent probably 20, close to 30 minutes just doing this that's how slowly I work at it um, you can see uh, this is a good angle you can see the spacers with the flush uh, rivets that hold the nut plates to the opposite side of that um, assembly and then the holes there for the bolts that will bolt on the aileron bell crank um, bracket um, but yeah that's the bottom side of it that nests up against the spar against the forward side of the spar. Um, but yeah, it does take a while, at least for me, to tap this material. The instructions um, 
say to tap that, I think to about an inch deep. I think I have a graphic coming up here, but yeah, tap it to an inch, which is basically the length of the cutting portion of that uh, tap that I'm using. So that gives you, I guess, an idea of, you know, how, far, yeah, yeah, three eighths by 16 and an inch deep. So yeah, anyways, um, get through this piece of material. Then I head outside and, well, I clean it up, deburr the edges, do all that good stuff, um, and then prime it so that it's ready to attach to the plane. This was um, a relatively short work day. Um, I think maybe looking at the the GoPro footage, maybe three hours total. But, I mean, you figure an hour of that is priming or waiting for primer to dry. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I, I mentioned at the beginning of the video all these different bags of random parts. They're, they're not random. They're part of sub kits. Um, but there were so many with this new kit that are sort of new bolts, different size rivets or whatever they are. But you kind of think that almost doesn't justify making a whole container for something that's maybe four or five pieces. But when you do have to run back and forth looking through a bag and through the inventory kit, which is what I'm doing right here to locate, um, so for example, these bolts um, that hold this assembly to the spar, um, you have AN bolts, uh, nylock nuts, and washers. And the washers are very similar, except for one is slightly thinner than the other. So I think in a minute, um, you'll see me sitting down at the workbench, sorting through, basically just while waiting for primer to dry, making a little um, container full of all the parts that I'm gonna need to bolt these and making sure that the washers are in the correct order <clears throat> in which they're going to attach uh, the material. And that's what I'm doing right here. And that little silver piece over to the right is a, uh, a little guide to measure uh, bolts uh, because some of them are very similar in size. And uh, yep, so getting it all bolted on now, this was a little bit of a process. Uh, for one, um, you're matching up a lot of uh, material um, to put bolts through that are fairly close tolerance and the holes that you are working through. Um, for example, on the tie down assembly has been primed. So um, you have that additional uh, thickness in there. And then the brackets, the um, aileron belt crank brackets are powder coated, um, which adds significant thickness to those holes. So there's a bit of fine tuning the fit um, very carefully. Um, I don't have, I think these are, gosh, I, I, I don't remember. I would just be guessing um, the size, but just very carefully, little bits at a time, reaming out the holes. Here, right here, as I'm um, attaching the um, bell crate uh, bracket or one of the, the brackets, I'm really kind of like, boy, it feels like I'm, it takes a lot of force to get these in. This is, I've attached a ton of nut plates, but I haven't put any screws or bolts into nut plates. And so um, they are so called self locking, which means that there's an additional drag torque um, required to get them to pass through. So with these A and three bolts, I believe, um, the torque uh, setting is supposed to be like 20 to 25 inch pounds. Um, but what I have found is when I'm um, installing these in through into the nut plates, um, the torque wrench is you know, it's, it's hitting 25 inch pounds, um, before, <laughs> before that thing's even near to, uh, threaded through the nut plate or the plate nut as I'm now want to say. So, um, I think there'll be a few times here where you see me go back over to my research station and start learning a little bit more about um, how to properly torque these things, um, accounting for uh, drag 
and then once I got that, then um, it made sense and it came out fine. But I will, of course, um, I purposely didn't put any torque seal on any of these um, because I'm going to go back and, and recheck them all before I'm completely satisfied that it's uh, correct. And this is really, as far as I got today, was just finishing up those parts, priming them, attaching them. This turned out to be a fairly time-consuming process because I, you know, getting those things fitted properly and, and not wanting to go crazy reaming out those holes. I didn't want to lose fitting, but they came out nice. They're properly torqued, but like I said, I'll go back and, and check them again. And so I decided um, that... Uh, I decided what I wanted to do with this day was just uh, hit the road and head out to Lowe's and pick up some um, pick up some eye bolts for the tie downs uh, so I could see that thing come together. Um, which, by the way, are much less expensive than I thought. And stainless eye bolts were like two bucks a piece uh, and a couple of nuts. Um, but yeah, that's really it for the work that was accomplished this day. And it looks pretty good on the airplane, got to say. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, that will pretty much wrap up this one. Um, I think after this, I get these spars put away up on the shelves and covered up in ferny pads so that I can start working on the rear spar. So, And that will be coming up in the next episode. Uh, thanks again for uh, watching. Uh, do that likey, subscribey, turn on notification y thing. And uh, we'll catch you in the next video coming up the next day or two or less, if you know me. Anyways, thanks again. Take care. See you in the next time.